Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jan Červenka. To present you our Athena Git interface, which is used for advanced modeling of reinforced concrete structures. Uh, let me introduce a little bit our company. Uh, our company name is Chervenka Consulting, and we are located in Prague, Czech Republic. You, what you see on the picture is, um, is not our office. This is uh, the main dominant uh, in Prague, which is the Prague Castle. Our company is small. We are about 20 engineers, most of them with a PhD degree. But uh, we are very internationally. We uh, sell our software and also provide consulting ser services basically all over the world. So what we do, we try to model structures like uh, what you see on the slide. So bridges, nuclear containments, or offshore wind uh, generation structures. And we, as you can see, we can either model structural details or we can model the whole structures. Uh, well, we, because we are part of this end, uh, which is connected to Git, so I would like to talk about uh, our interface to Git. So we are using a Git program as a pre-processing tool to prepare data or non-linear analysis. Uh, we, our software focuses on concrete, so that's why uh, we need to have a very good material models to simulate the concrete behavior. But uh, often uh, it's not enough to model only concrete, but to model the soil or rock below our structure or we need to model a combination of materials, concrete, masonry, steel. So for that, we have various material models available in Athena. And uh, we focus on advanced problems. So for that, we have to consider also time-dependent phenomena, like, and also other types of analysis, like transport of heat or moisture, high temperature analysis due to fire, long-term deformation due to creep, durability problems, uh, which may cause corrosion of reinforcement, and of course, uh, short-term events like dynamic analysis. Slide uh, summarizes some of the main features of our software, which uh, is the modeling of reinforcement, as you see on the right top uh, figure. We can model each reinforcement uh, exactly or individually, if necessary, with exact location, curvature, and position in the structure. What you see on the bottom right is uh, our visualization of uh, the cracking process. So we can see the cracks on the surface or also inside the structure. And with uh, various filters, it is possible to create very realistic uh, of uh, the, the structure response. And what is very unique the, uh, feature of our software is what you see on the bottom left, which is a typical window uh, on your computer that you see when the program is running. So you actually see how the structure deforms, how it cracks. You can define various monitoring points which allow you to monitor uh, deflection, load, like this load displacement diagram, stress in the strain in the reinforcement, stress at various locations, maximum cracks, openings, and so on. So this uh, slide shows uh, our uh, international exposure. So you, you see we are in all continents. These uh, yellow marks indicate uh, the countries where we have uh, representatives and uh, for selling our software. Uh, I told you that we focus on a real modeling of the real structure behavior, and for that we need nonlinear, nonlinear material models. And our main focus is on concrete and reinforced concrete. So we are using this kind of model, as you see on the, on the left, which is the failure criterion for concrete. 
this is used mainly in compression where we use a plasticity based model and in tension our fracture model for the crack propagation is based on the fracture energy and the crack band model to facilitate the mesh objective uh, results. Uh, well, of course, we use, uh, we validate our model based on uh, experimental data, but the best test is to make this kind of, uh, or to participate in this kind of blind prediction benchmarks, which are usually organized by a professor at the university who invites people to predict, to try to predict the experiment he is planning to perform. And you can see that one of the first competitions we took part in was 1982. Professor Collins in Toronto and our model was uh, announced as the best model. And it was actually a model by my father at that time. Uh, so you can see we have a cli quite long tradition working in this in this area. Well, I would like then some more recent uh, competitions and main I would like to bring to attention this one by University of Parma, Professor Belletti, 2014. And uh, we were the first, our model was the first or the best prediction. And it was not done by our office, but it was done by Dr. Ill at the Delft University. So I'd like to emphasize this as not only somebody working in our office can obtain very good results. And one of the more recent uh, competitions are these large beams tested at uh, the Toronto University. You see span was 90 meters, height was four meters, very interesting uh, beam, very large uh, beams. Results were presented uh, at this concrete international journal. And here you can compare the prediction of our crack pattern on the animation at the bottom with the experimental crack pattern at the top. And the failure load in the experiment for this case, uh, I have to mention here that this beam was actually a single beam, but it was tested first, uh, it first cracked on this left side because this one was not reinforced. Then it was strengthened by some ties and the, the loading was continued to fail it on the left, on the left side which was reinforced with uh, minimum shear reinforcement. And here you see uh, these uh, red uh, circles denote our results. So both times we were in this uh, yellow zone of 10% uh, accuracy. And because we had also very good predictions of the stiffness after cracking and the failure pattern or the crack pattern, we were uh, announced as winners of this competition. So this just showed you that these models work and have a very good predictive capability. Uh, and uh, this slide summarizes some of the other features that we have to consider. So we, of course, we need a good concrete model. We need to have uh, interface models and very important for concrete structures modeling is the modeling of reinforcement. So we have various models, smeared model, which is like a composite material. And then we have a discrete reinforcement model either as external cable or internal bars, where we can also take into account the bond. That means failure between concrete and reinforcement. This shows some of the input dialogs in a Git interface for the definition of various materials. We always, when a user needs to define a material, he only needs to know the compressive strength, which is what you, what usually engineers knows, and all the other parameters are then generated, and of course can be modified if the user knows better. Important is the modeling of reinforcement. So let me show you how this is accomplished uh, in uh, the on co connection with uh, Git. So we have this uh, structure. There is a reinforcement passing through the structure. And when a finite element mesh is generated in uh, Git, you see the two meshes are totally independent. Uh, the volumetric mesh and the reinforcement mesh is meshes are totally independent. And then when Athena starts, it is searching for intersection of the 
reinforcement uh, definition, reinforcing elements with the uh, solid elements, new nodes, these blue nodes indicate new reinforcement nodes, edit at the location of the intersection. And then these uh, at each element, these new reinforcement nodes are kinematically, kinematically constrained with uh, the surrounding uh, 3D or 2D elements. This shows mathematically this connection. And of course, if we want to take into account the bond, we have to introduce additional degrees of freedom at uh, these blue nodes corresponding to the reinforcement. And these additional degrees of freedom represent slip. In this way, we can take into account this bond failure when the reinforcement is uh, losing connection with uh, the surrounding concrete. Uh, Another interesting feature in Athena is that we have special bending uh, elements for beam as well as for shells so that we can easily connect uh, volumetric elements with bending shell or beam elements. Uh, and we have, of course, also standard two dimensional shells or one dimensional beams. Now I would like to show some practical examples. So this is a very nice arch bridge in Prague in Czech Republic, which uh, was analyzed by nonlinear analysis. Here you see the model. In this case, it was only a quarter of the bridge analyzed. And the objective was to, uh, to check the cracking at these end uh, sections of the bridge, which were only partially pre-stressed. Another example is from nuclear industry where uh, our software was used to check uh, these buildings uh, which contain uh, these buildings close to the containments which contain the control room so let me show a quick animation of this process so you can, it was a pushover analysis which was part of the seismic assessment of these buildings of these important buildings uh, where the control room of the nuclear nuclear power plant is located so you see the crack development and uh, the crack width also uh, calculation of during this pushover analysis. Uh, now I would like to show one uh, new development uh, where we have this uh, durability model developed in Athena, the combined chemomechanical model, and it allows us to define special boundary conditions uh, corresponding to environmental load. In this case, for instance, chloride contents on the surface. And because we know the location of each reinforcement bar, we can easily determine uh, in time the propagation of chlorides. And when it reaches reinforcement, we can take into account also the presence of cracks, as you can see on this figure. And uh, where, where the crack is located, the, the chlorides penetrate faster and the corrosion indicated by this red area starts earlier. So this uh, figure now checks with experimental checks with some uh, tests from Japan. Here we can see a very good match of uh, the experimental points and um, non uh, uh, non linear analysis. And I, I would like to show one example of practical application from a bridge in the Czech Republic. First, uh, uh, this bridge was uh, monitored to have a calibration of the model. So, using some special tracks, weighted tracks, uh, uh, the response of the bridge was measured and it was used uh, to calibrate. Uh, the numerical model. So here you see one situation of a track with particular weight passing the bridge and uh, following the response of the sensors locating at the bottom of the bridge. And uh, after the model was calibrated, then it is all to make uh, long-term predictions considering the durability, the reinforcement corrosion, as you see on this slide, we chose uh, the corrosion of the reinforcement after 100 years and the final failure mode if the structure is loaded up to failure. And we can then load the structure up to failure at various year, years. For instance, you see here the blue curve is the original bridge 
And as we go in time, the strength of the bridge is decreasing. We can look at it also in this way, where on the horizontal axis is the time, on the vertical axis is the capacity of the bridge. And we can see what would be the mean response of the bridge. The blue line, uh, green line is the characteristic response. And if we apply some safety formats, we obtain this uh, red one, which corresponds to the design load. And for that, we can estimate that about 100 years, uh, the capacity of the structure would be too low and it would not be safe anymore to operate the bridge. So this model can be used for structural health monitoring. I would like to conclude my presentation with some nice views uh, from uh, GID, from the kit models prepared for Athena for very complicated uh, situations like this power house with Canada, you can see the curved pen stocks and very complicated frame uh, like uh, structure inside this, uh, this power house. And uh, there is, the objective of this analysis was to check the crack uh, pattern or the cracking, which was actually observed in the structure to explain it and to evaluate the reliability of the structure. And last model I want to share with you is this uh, model from a tall building in Dubai. So it is a building which is more than 400, 400 meters high, more than 100 uh, stories. And you see the model in Git. Uh, you see the details of the individual floors, uh, the walls, and also the diaphragma on the outer perimeter of this building. And this here are just some slides of the results of a pushover analysis in this case due to the wind load. And I would like to conclude with some final comments. So Git is a quite flexible program uh, which can be easily customized to uh, various uh, uh, numerical methods. The only problems we sometimes experience is, is with meshing complex and large problems, which uh, we uh, have to, which is good that it is improving in the new version, newer versions. And uh, we have to admit that with Athena, we are still using the traditional approach of uh, interfacing using the bus file and uh, combined with some TSL programming. And uh, for display of cracks, this is not yet supported in Git, so we are using uh, our own native Athena native post processor for that. So thank you very much for your attention. And I hope the next time we'll have a chance to meet at uh, some future Git uh, convention where we can meet in person. So thank you and goodbye.